Okay, excellent. So I am going to tackle this massive big topic that needs far more than an hour. Um, and that is assessment, of course. And the first thing that I want to suggest to everybody is when you go to a new district, first thing you need to do is to see what your report cards are going to look like. What do you have to report? If you don't have to report anything, you, you still should assess and know where your students are at. Um, but how many expectations you can report on will help determine how many assessments you actually need to complete. And the other thing is, if you only have music once a week for 30 minutes, don't beat yourself up trying to assess everything that's in your state curriculum. You can't do it. If your district is only going to give you a teeny tiny bit of time to do a great big curriculum, you can only do a teeny tiny bit of the curriculum. It doesn't matter if you're the best teacher in the world, you can only do what you're given time to do. So don't beat yourself up if, if it looks like, um, if, if you're feeling like, I don't have enough time, I can't assess everything. So for me, the big three, number one, steady beat. It, it's, it's absolutely essential to everything that we do in music that kids are able to keep a steady beat. Whether they're pre-kindergarten or they're sixth graders, if they're in an ORF ensemble and they're sixth graders, they need to be able to keep a steady beat. So that's something that I assess each and every year, probably each and every term. Um, and lots of it will be done informally, but if that's an expectation that's going on your report card, then you do a formal one. So second one for me, the second of the big three is singing in tune. And this is not a concept, this is a skill. And to me, singing in tune is a life skill. I think it's really important that everybody in the whole world be able to match pitch. And so that's another big one for me. And the third one is reading rhythms. I can teach anybody to read melodies. If they know how to read rhythms, it just makes it that much easier. So I'm going to jump into my screen share and I'm going to try and show you as well where on the website you can find these assessments because they are all here, but we've done a pretty good job of hiding some of them. So we will try and I'm going to try and keep a window open so I can jump to music play online that I can see. So this is easy music assessments. So these beat and rhythm checklists, all these checklists and all these rubrics have come right from lesson planning second grade. That's exactly where I've taken them from. So if I go to the website and I go to lesson planning, I'm not on the overview side. I'm on the lesson plan side and I'm going to go to grade two. And there's this beautiful little button over here called planning resources. This is like a gold mine. So here is your grade two assessment tracking chart as a PDF. Here it is as a Word doc. The beautiful thing about the Word doc, you can edit it. And so you can adjust it so that it matches your district curriculum. We'll be close, but there'll be little things where we're out. So the PDF, see how well this, oh, look at this. In my hotel room, this PDF took two minutes to open. So this is definitely better down in the fitness room than it was up there. Um, so this is the PDF version. You can download and print, and that's all I did was I screenshot it. But the Word document version of it, you can edit. So if I go here to the Word doc, I'm not going to be able to open it because boom, it just downloads instantly. So that's where you'll find these things. Just to recap, lesson planning, and then click on lesson plans, and then go to the yellow button. And each grade level, Carrie Lynn did a beautiful, beautiful job of putting together these assessments. Oh, and Danae, thank you so much. Danae added music self-assessment to color the emoji. And this is a really cute one that I'll talk about along the way, but I really like this. So if you've got report cards coming up soon, copy this, download copy, give it to your kids and let them tell you how they are doing in music. So easy music assessment, this beat and rhythm checklist comes from lesson planning on music play online. So this is checklist style, not rubrics. Checklist, I put the students' names down the list. So student A, student B, student C. 
And I won't pre-fill these in. I will fill these in as I do those assessments. So if I want to know if they can keep a beat, tapping, stepping, my first beat assessment might be moving to the beat. And then I will just do a check mark or an X if they can't. And typically for moving to the beat, most of my kids are going to do it. So it'll be check, 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 check down the class list. If there's one child who's not got it, an X and we'll do it again. And then the next time that I decide to assess, beat is something that I would assess often. So I might do beat. I might even note the name of the song that, I find, that I'm using. If I'm using action leader, beat, action leader, and then go down the class list. This goes really, really quickly in a checklist format if you line the kids up in class list order. And if you do that, then you can just hold your IDOKIO app or you can hold your class list printable page or your printed version of your class list up and you just go check, 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 no, check, 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 and you can go through it. Here is the rubric version. And again, rubrics, typically uh, most districts go one, two, three, four. There are some, Ontario, for example, that goes four, three, two, one. So take it for what it's meant, but one is beginning. That's the child that is really struggling to maintain a steady beat. Two is satisfactory. They're trying, but they haven't quite got there. Three, they're proficient. And four, they never miss. They're always bang on. So that's my one, two, three, fours for beat. But again, I probably would just do beat with a checklist. So going on to here, where, what can I use for assessment opportunities? Anybody who has done pre-K has seen time for music, clap your hands a million times. So you observe as students sing and move to the song. If you want something more formal, videotape your classes and then you can look at them after and you can do that double check through your class to make sure that everybody does have it. Other good songs and music play, Action Leader, Shake It, one Green Jelly Bean, Johnny One Hammer, Go Bananas, Count and Go, Button Factory, Fuzzy the Clown, all of these are really, really good ones. And I pulled most of this list from learning modules, um, movement, movement uh, songs fun. The other place that I can pull lots of fun movement stuff is from units going into dance. And there I can find it. So let's get everybody up and moving. Let's do Go Bananas because I'm really fond of this song and I can do it in the fitness room that I am in. So we're going to go to Music Play Online. I'm going to search Go Bananas and you will see how easy it is. Okay, I don't like that light in my eyes. Okay, Go Bananas. It, it's in pre-K, don't let that bother you. You can do it with all grade levels. Thanks to Sharon from Pre-K Joy. Born bananas. Born, born bananas. And the other born hand. Born banana. Born, born banana. Then you peel banana. Peel, peel banana. Peel banana. Peel, peel banana. Then you go bananas. Go, go bananas. And as you can see, I'm keeping a beat. Born, I can born, watch the kids born, born, to see how orange, well they are. Born, be the orange, form, form the orange. Then you peel the orange. Peel, peel the orange. Peel the orange. Peel, peel the orange. Then you squeeze the orange. Squeeze, squeeze the orange. Squeeze the orange. Squeeze, squeeze the orange. And all the way through, I'm finding new ways to keep a beat. Form the apple. Form, form the apple, form the apple, form, form the apple, then you slice the apple, slice, slice the apple, slice the apple, slice, slice the apple, then you eat the apple, eat, eat the apple, eat the apple, eat, eat the apple. Form the corn, form, form the corn, got the corn song, form the corn. Pop the corn, pop, pop the corn, pop the corn, pop, pop the corn. I like that one. Form the 
potato, form, form, potato, form, potato, form, form, potato. Then you peel, potato, peel, peel, potato, peel, potato, peel, peel, potato. Then you mash, potato, mash, mash, potato, mash, potato, mash, mash, potato. First you form, banana, form, form, banana. that fun? I, I really like that one. Um, and because it's in pre-K, I think there are people who haven't found it yet. So that is an example of one of our beat assessment opportunities. So movement action songs, the, the singing games, and again, another really good opportunity to observe and assess how well kids are moving to the beat. Um, snail, 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 go around and round and round is a good one because they're stepping on those snails as they go around the, around the room. Choo-choo train, choo-choo train. Again, they're keeping a beat. They're creating movement. Engine number nine, same. Hey, Betty Martin, tiptoe, tiptoe. So they're moving again to the steady beat. And older kids, I really like Stella, Ella, Ola, clap, clap, clap. It's a really good one for... Um, keeping the beat because they're clapping on the beat as they pass the clap around the room. Every reading song in music play has beat pointing pages and beat interactives. So you can do those pointing pages digitally or you can print out and do them as a manipulative. Uh, there was a question on Music Play Teachers Group today about where the generic pointing page was for beat. And if you look up engine number nine, you'll find a generic one that just has 16 beats and the kids can point to it. Um, the instrument songs are really good for getting kids to play an instrument to the beat. So play and play and stop, play and play and stop, Let's play and play all through the day. Let's play and play and stop. And there are other non-pitched instrument songs in instruments, unpitched. And I can show you on the website when we go back where those are. Or for arrangements, beautiful opportunity to practice keeping a steady beat. That's what ORF arrangements are all about, is maintaining ensemble by maintaining steady beat. So again, I think I've spent one third of my webinar just talking about beat, but it's to me this is number one this is the big one that i want to assess um this is a printable beat assessment i noticed that starlight is coming up in the learning modules and in this particular assessment this is the only way that i have ever found to assess whether kids have internalized the beat or they can audiate is another another word inner hearing audiation um, different people use different terms. So what they would do is they would sing Starlight and point to the beats as they sing. Starlight, star bright, first star I see tonight. Wish I may, wish I might, have the wish I wish tonight. And in the interactive version of the beat chart, you turn certain beats off. So I might turn off line two kids would sing that inside their heads and they'd sing out loud, out loud, out loud. Starlight, star bright in their head. Wish I may, wish I might, have the wish I wish tonight. And I'd keep turning on off lots of beats till they finally sang almost the whole song inside their head. Usually I do first note, last note. And then I ask them to point to the beats themselves and answer the questions. Grade one, two kids, I, I read the questions to them because their reading ability doesn't always match this. So what word falls on beat number three? If they're singing in their head, they would sing star, light, star. It would be the word star. What word falls on beat number 12? You do it in your head. Figure out what beat falls on number 12. Ready, go. If you got the word might, you were correct. And then 
we've turned, I've turned the question around. What beat does the word first fall on? What beat does the word may fall on? I am not going to do this particular beat assessment probably more than once in the whole school year, but it's a good assessment to tell if kids have internalized if they can audiate. And probably in terms of reading ability, it's good to wait till the spring for this one instead of doing it in the fall. So here are some of these really fun songs that you can do to assess if kids are keeping a beat. This one, you have four leaders, and the first one is the best, the second one is the slowest, the third one's the fastest, and then the fourth one is the best one, and it goes longer. This is in the song list. It's gonna go into kindergarten, but it's not there yet. And it's just a really fun, let's do a little bit of it. We won't do the whole thing. So copy what I need. Be an action leader, I'm sure that you can. Be an action leader, the best one in the land. Lie, lie, la la la, la 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 la. Be an action leader, I'm sure that you can. Be an action leader, the slowest in the land. Lie, lie, la la la, la 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 an action leader, I'm sure that you can. Be an action leader, the best one in the land. Lie, lie, la la la, lie, lie, la 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 la, lie, lie, la la la, la 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 la, lie, lie, la la la, la 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 um, I like in the listening kits, listening kit one, number 36, has a really pretty little sheet. And I would get four leaders up, keeping a beat to the music of Handel now. I can assess these four. And what do the rest of the kids want? They want their turn to, to, to be the leader. So everybody in the class wants turn. They get to hear Handel five or six times and it's good for them. Stella Ella Ola, such a great beat keeping game for your older kids. Uh, this is one that's not in music play as of yet, but it's like it's played like Stella Ella Ola. This is kids on a playground at Holy Redeemer School in Belize City. So I went there. So you can see they're passing the clap. What color butterfly did he see? And when they got to the last one, he said red, R-E-D, and whoever was clapped on D was out. Um, the song Gitsi Gokamim is uh, an indigenous song by Olivia, actually by Connie Tailfeathers, and it's sung by her sister, Olivia Tailfeathers. And I often invite the kids to choose unpitched instruments to play. So lots and lots of opportunity to um, observe whether kids can keep a steady beat. So here is the beat and rhythm checklist again. Once I've got beat assessed, I might go on to rhythm. And of course, that will depend where my students are at. I might have grade five kids that are just learning TT and TA. Our COVID kids are way behind. So don't move them into the actual grade five rhythms until you make sure they can read the beginning rhythms. So here is a rhythm rubric. And you can, again, do it either way. You can use a checklist or you can use a rubric. I often, um, <coughs> with the really simple rhythms where I think they should know them, <coughs> I'll just do it as a checklist. But when I get to more complex rhythms, then I'll switch to the rubric and mark it one, two, three, or four. So on Music Play Online, tons of opportunities to practice rhythm. First is in the rhythm practice section, there are rhythm reading assessments. There's four beat ones and there are eight beat ones. I actually only took a picture of the four. <coughs> and now you have the option of video or you have the option of slides. The video is really handy if you don't wanna to have to stand there and turn pages. Um, but some of the kids get sometimes a little bit anxious when they're put on the spot and they have to do it right then. So if you've got kids with severe anxiety, use the slide version and just click from slide to slide. Or you simply print out the flashcards 
and have the kids read the flashcards. You hold them up, you say, student A, ready, go. And student A reads it. Choose the next flashcard. Student B, ready, go. I want to make some half page flashcards too, so you don't have so much copying to do. Um, dictation. I really like rhythm dictation as an activity. My students were very, very good at it because I worked at it. And my, my beginners, my grade twos, would be able to do ta ti ti rest. My fifth grade would be able to do ticka 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 ti ticka ta. They would be able to do all kinds of rhythms. And again, it's a video. I don't prefer that format. I would prefer to download the PDF just with the ideas and then use it. Here's another way of uh, seeing if your children are understanding rhythms. So this is a bug composition activity. Snail Snail has it, uh, Bee Bee Bumblebee has it. And I love having these little creepy crawly things in plastic bags, and then the kids can create their word rhythm. Spider bat, lizard rat. And then they can use craft sticks to show how many sounds, spider, two sounds, that one sound. And so I can go around the room and I can quickly snap pictures of all the kids with their compositions to see if they've composed, um, if they've notated what they've composed correctly. So this is very much a grade one activity, could be grade two, even grade three still like doing this. Um, as well. Uh, there's interactive versions of it on the website. And again, every reading song on the site has this. And it'll have it more than one way very often. So Starlight is first, is it one sound or two? Star, one sound. Star I is two sounds. And that's where I would, if I haven't already, I'd label one sound as ta, two sounds as tt, or do and due day, whatever counting systems you use. Second way, this is two beat rhythms, and this is a little bit more complex for the kids than, than just naming one beat rhythms. And then there's matching worksheets. So this is the right the rhythm worksheet for Starlight. Any reading song on Music Play Online has these um, components. So I'm going to take you to the website and show you where they are. So I'm going to go to the song list, and I'm going to search star, I don't know if it's one word or two. Starlight. It's in grade two. I've just chosen everything from grade two today. And if I go down here, so here's my interactives. So here's my interactive beat. Here's the interactive beat chart. And here's where I can turn off those beats if I want kids to do them in their heads. Kids think this is a game. They don't, they don't even think about it as being um, a learning activity. It's a game to them. It's turn off the beats game. And then when we come to here, we have is it one sound or two with icons. Here we have one sound or two with notes and it's not going to let me enter a wrong note. So I get that. So your kids will be successful at this activity. And if I go further along, I have a composition activity. Starlight, starlight, moon starlight wish starlight wish and i can make my word rhythm composition or i can simply use note values to do it here's the one that i showed in my powerpoint starlight star bright first star i see tonight see tonight and you can have the kids go through this. So again, you can get the kids to screenshot, send it to you. You could go around the room just checking. So it could be formal, it could be informal. But that's the digital way of doing it. Then if I go to the beat and rhythm worksheets, this is the printable way of doing it. So here's the beat pointing page. This is specific to the song. You might want to do that. Here's that beat assessment I showed you. Here's a rhythm pointing page. Here's a song sort. This is another really good activity because the kids sort the rhythms of the songs. Can they get it into correct order? And again, you could just take pictures of all the kids that have done that with their little cards. Here is the printable version of the two beat. Starlight would be ta ta. So it looks a tiny bit different than the interactive I just showed you, but it's a very good assessment all the same. 
This is an easier assessment. Is it one sound, two sounds, or no sound? Star, one sound. So I put the ta in. So again, every reading song has this. I just happened to pick Starlight as the one that I was going to show you today. And I need to move me and get out of there. So that is beat and rhythm and lots and lots of assessment opportunities. Oh, I didn't show you the rhythm race game. This is a really good way for your older kids to practice rhythms. So if I go into games and I go into rhythm racer, I can choose my level. So let's do one from upper elementary. Level 14, T ticka ticka T. And when I come up here, I get to start, I get to choose what road I want. I always choose yellow. I like the yellow car. So now I get to hear it. Complex because it's eight beats. But if I get it right, they do something cool to my car. And I got that one already. And this time they're putting some gas in. So that game is lots of fun for your older kids to play. Um, the easier levels will not be eight beats long. I would be tempted with this to play the game and just let the kids hear it and not see it if I wanted to use these patterns as an assessment. Or you simply choose the patterns that you want, you clap them to the kids, they write them down. I used to do that always with scrap paper from the recycling bin because there was always some left around. Okay, melodic assessments. So shows high or low is first. I just did starlight. So I would get the kids to show with their arms how the sounds go up and down. And I would, again, go through my checklist to see who could do it successfully or not. When I actually wanted to do that checklist, I would ask the kids to close their eyes. So they're not looking at the rest of the class. They're having to hear for themselves. Star is the high note light is the low note so they close their eyes and sing the song and show how it went high and low star light star bright and if i could see that the majority of the class was not getting it we practice that skill um, sometimes by joining hands with whoever's beside us and raising and lowering our hands sometimes we would stand and sit stand for the high notes sit for the low ones if you have a stretchy band Everybody hold on to the stretchy band and show how the notes go higher and lower. Um, parachutes work really well. Scarves, kids love playing with scarves. So you can see I've got shows high and low three times here. Again, I wouldn't write this all out in advance in my plan book. I would write shows high and low, starlight, the date, and then check, 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 check. Nope, nope, nope. And there will be more no's for melody than there will be for rhythm or beat. Uh, singing within the class, are they matching pitch? So I put on a recording and I do what I call the three second listen. I have the kids stand in class list order and then I put on a recording. So grade two, it might be, um, I'm thinking uh, right in that new river train is right in the first week of school. If I kept working on that piece and the kids were good at it, it would be a good choice to use for this assessment. Maybe O Canada, maybe Star Spangled Banner, whatever song you've worked on a long time. Put on the recording and then you go down the row of kids and you listen to the first child for about two or three seconds. And that's all you need to tell if they're matching the pitch of the rest of the class. So that's, I call that the three second listen. Another way is to sing hello attendance. I was frazzled when I started this webinar and I didn't bring Bobo with me, but I would have Bobo sing to the kids um, and sing hello to the child. Hello, Abby, and Abby would sing, hello, Bobo, back to Bobo. And then you can check off if they're matching pitch or you could use one, two, three, four as, as your rubric. Uh, singing a solo in a game, I often use guessing games to assess pitch matching. So in grade two, the guessing game that I use most often is doggy, doggy, where's your bone? Someone stole it from your home. The guesser at the front of the room sings, who has my bone? 
and the one who's got the dog bone sings, I have your bone. So I get two chances to hear the kids sing. And if they use a silly voice, I have your bone, trying to disguise it, I ask them to sing again using their real voice so that I can tell if they're matching pitch. So these are all the opportunities. I put this in your handout. Sing So and Me songs with the eyes closed like starlight. Uh, choose the solfa pattern, teacher plays or sings. You could do it on the xylophone. You could do it with your hands and uh, or with flashcards. I put out three flashcards. You choose the one that I hear. Uh, match the melody is the game in the game section that will do this same thing. In solfa practice, prepare solfa section, same different game, high, low game, and um, does it go up, down, or stay the same game? Those are really good beginning solfa preparation assessments. Name solfa notes in an example. So if I go back to the website and I go out of the games and into the star list, uh, uh, song list, I'm gonna look up starlight again. And here it is. So can they name the solfa notes in the song? Here's the digital version of it. And I could go and I could screenshot that the child has been sex successful. Or if I want to do this as a written assessment, I could go to, can they name the solfa notes in the song? We're actually making um, new solfa worksheets for the songs that are much easier. And I'm excited about them. Um, they're trace and color worksheets. So not made yet, but watch for them in the next well, because trace and color means every child can be successful. Can't necessarily use it as an assessment, but it's good practice for them. Can they complete a pattern? Um, so if you give them um, a staff board, I use my cookie sheet staff, and I give them the first two notes and show them so me as a as a pattern and then I sing hmm 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 can they complete it reading flashcards and in the solfa practice section we're adding melody flashcards and we're adding them now in single keys as well as mixed keys and then melodic dictation as well um I jumped ahead sorry notate a known song that was what we did with starlight create a melody for a poem or chant can they do that there was a really cute one um there's cute ones for easter there's cute ones for spring i don't think we have any for christmas so i think we're going to have to make some holiday ones and match the melody game really good game and instead of having them show one two or three giving them a staff and having them notate the answer on a staff gives them great practice for doing melodic dictation and assess pitch matching. I mentioned Bobo and the guessing games and coming very soon is trace and color worksheets. Okay, I'm doing well. I like to assess timbre and I actually have these in the wrong order. This is assessing timbre for our older students. So older students would um, can use this. I will find this on the website, this instrument assessment, assessment in units in instruments and instruments of the orchestra and so the instrument assessment is this is the old one this is the new and let's look up the i want the instrument assessment did i miss it i think i missed it i found it when i searched for it <laughs> Janae, did I completely go past this? Um, I'm not sure. I feel like I saw assessment a little lower, but I'm not sure. Or are you looking for woodwind assess, percussion assess? Oh, this is what I was looking for. Oh, in perfect. Assessment one. That's exactly what I put in the handout. So Wi-Fi is so much better. These pictures are showing up. So question one, I would play my audio for selection one. <laughs> And then the students would write down what instrument they heard. So they would write down the clarinet. And then question two, I go to audio two. And then I would write down Q. 
piano on my piece of paper. So there are, I believe, 10 questions. And so the, the students should just give them a scrap piece of paper, put their name at the top, number from one to 10, and there's their assessment of timbre. For the little guys, I really like this mystery box. As I teach them the different instruments, how to play, what they're made of, what they sound like, I put them in the mystery box and go bring this out every couple of weeks with different instruments. And then they get to um, identify the, the, the instrument they hear. They love this. If you wanna do it as an assessment, um, you could make them a little sheet with pictures of the instruments and then they could circle the one that they're hearing. These are rubrics to assess singing. And again, I got these from grade two lesson plans, um, the, the overview. I, again, the rubrics are here. I would probably do this on my class list and just noting whether it's a one, two, three, or four. So one is very beginning level. Maybe they're still speaking and not singing. Two, they're getting somewhat close to pitch, but not very close. Three, proficient, they're usually there and they're matching their pitch. And four is the excellent, the student that nails it all the time. But there's other things that you can assess with singing. Do they have a good tone or are they shouty? We have a lot of shouty kids. So if they're singing with a light, uh, singing in tune, but with a shouty tone, they might be a two here and a, a three or a four for pitch matching here. Sings with expression. I think that is easy, uh, most easily assessed with our three second listen, where I have the kids line up in class list order and I listen to each of them sing just a little bit. Good posture, I am not using good posture right now. I have a little rhyme for this. Two, four, six, eight. Everybody sit up straight. Put your feet on the floor. Sit ahead a little more. I use it with my band students to get them from leaning back in their chairs. But good posture, I would do that again by observation. And if I wanted to make sure that I was assessing accurately, take a quick video of the class and look it over after. Sings in tune with good tone, expression, and diction. That's everything all in one. But you're probably better off doing one little thing at a time. So the three second listen is noted here. And again, I would probably just go down my class list and I would mark them with a one, two, three, or four. Sometimes I use my own little code. X is excellent. VG, very good. Or up, down sometimes. Sometimes if they're a little above the pitch, I would put the arrow up. Sometimes if they're a little under, I'd put the arrow down. Satisfactory, they're getting close. Not yet is the ones that are using speaking voice. So assess pitch matching with guessing games, three second listen, or you can add, even ask the kids to self-assess. How do you think you're doing with your singing? Give me a one if you aren't trying very hard or you, you feel like you're not singing very well. Give me a two if you think that you sound pretty good. Give me a three if you think you're a really, really good singer and you feel really good about your singing. One, two, three, go. And then they do it on their, um, on themselves so nobody else has to see how they are doing. This is some ideas for creating and, and assessing form, creating responses to music. Creating is a little bit trickier. Again, I would strongly recommend the use of the video to record how well they're doing. So the beginning creation um, doesn't include details or elements of music, uh, but the satisfactory, it might have a little bit of detail and maybe they've done something with dynamics or with tempo that makes it interesting. Here, the proficient level, their creation, if they're doing a rhythm composition, they've included some interesting instruments. If I've asked them to use different dynamics, they've included that. And then the excellent is when they've got something that's really unique and, and really interesting to listen to and includes all of the elements that I asked them for. They can't mark them on elements of music unless you give that to them in their instructions. And then rubric D is um, responses to music. I like uh, listening logs and I like response journals. So listening logs, there's lots of them in the listening kits, 
The response journal is where you just give them a piece of paper, you put on a piece of music, and then you say, write about how the music makes you feel or what the music makes you think, think of. And for some kids, that's enough of a starter that they're going to respond in great detail and great depth. And those are the ones that I'd give a four to. Some detail, some depth would be a three, not too much, but they've written something down, a two, either a one would be where they have written almost nothing. So movement rubric, same idea. Um, I would give them something like the action leader song that we did, or a song like Rocky Mountain, where I often have kids create movement. So I'd give one group verse one, another group verse two, another verse group three, and then I would observe their movement. Is it appropriate or not? Does it fit the music? Does it not? Are they keeping a beat? Are they not? The ribbons and scarves in the listening kit, there's tons of them. And again, I'll go to the website so you can see how to search. So I'm going to look for ribbon. And all of these examples have ribbon choreography with them. And there's no reason why you always have to do, okay, there's a demo. And typically that's me standing up showing what to do with the ribbon. So I've given a model of what you can do with the ribbon or with you can use scarves for this just as well. And then you let the kids create their own and you record. Are they keeping the beat? Are they moving to the music? Are they responding to the changes in dynamics? If there's tempo changes, are they responding? What I try to model when I'm doing it is the form of the piece. I'm trying to model that when the form changes, my movement changes. Are the kids getting the hang of that? So observe them and create their own. A really good one for your little guys is snowflakes are falling to the ground in pre-K. I really like the Strauss Emperor Waltz that's um, got scarves to it. And that would be for your older students. This is the music self-assessment that um, Danae just posted on the website. I really like this. So green, yellow, or red. Green means they're doing it. Yellow, sometimes. Red, oh, not doing it at all. So I always sing with a beautiful singing voice. Sure I do, I color that green. I play instruments gently. Mm, sometimes, color that yellow. I wait to start playing until I'm supposed to. I'm pretty good at that, color it green. I play with the steady beat. I'm awesome. I try my best in music class. I'm awesome. What could I do better? And it gives the kids a chance to think about this. So this is posted on the website and I'll go back to the planning section and show you where that is because I love this little assessment. Here are some concert assessments that I pulled from the Music Play Teacher's Guides and I haven't found a home for them on Music Play Online yet, but I will um, find a home and put them into lesson planning. So this is a concert self-assessment. I use good posture when singing, always almost always, sometimes seldom. I should have put these in the other order. So before I put them up, I'll switch them. So it goes one, two, three, four, not four, three, two, one. Here is evaluate a performance. And I pulled this from the concept slides for Music Play 3, song number one, I Like Singing. And this is actually a really good little checklist for what you wanna do with a class or a choir before you go into a performance. So discuss the performance. I would actually video it and I would play back the video for the kids. So they're seeing themselves on, on video and hearing themselves. Did we have good diction or our words clear? Could we do anything to help the audience hear our words more clearly? Did we breathe together? Did we sing phrases together? Did we start and end phrases together? Did we match pitch? So there's lots of ideas there for you. Here's another one, and I pulled this from Music Play 6 or Music Play for Middle School Teacher's Guide. This is a self-assessment of how kids do within the ORF Ensemble. And the kids will often be much harder on themselves than I would be. But again, I think this is important for kids to reflect on their own performance. We think it's us who make kids better musicians, but we're not. It's the kids themselves. We give them the tools 
so they know what to think about and what to improve. When I teach recorder in school, I, I, I can't hear 30 kids play one at a time. So I might model poor and good playing and then it's up to the child when they go home and practice to, um, to do it. So this is a chance for kids to reflect on what they need to improve their, their playing skills. Here's another one that I found, and I'm not even sure where this came from. I think this came from a, a teacher guide. And again, I think this is quite good. I did go one, two, three, four here. And it's um, a, a good set of criteria for assessing an ORF ensemble. Where I'm going to put these, and where the, I'm pretty sure there's some already, in units ORF, there is a lot of ORF resources. And I'll try and remember and go through all of these for you so you can see where they are. If I forget, please ask in the chat. Um, for assessing recorder performance, I really love the recorder karate. The only thing that I have done is cut down the number of belts. So white belt, hot cross buns, yellow belt, skin and bones, green belt, hush little baby, black belt, ode to joy. In a not so good year, in a really good year, if they get all the way to low C, that's great. And uh, for testing recorder karate, I would give them Tuesdays. I just did it one day a week. Otherwise, they were after me nonstop. And I would give them before school, recess, lunch, after school. And if they didn't test before a certain date, then I would test them in class. And sometimes I would test the whole song. Sometimes I might have two kids, one play the first line, one play the second, so that testing would go a little bit faster. And then you need worksheets or a good video for the kids who aren't testing to do. I've got some recorder rubrics in the recorder section. I'm pretty sure these are there. I have, um, this is a, a good playing example because this, this child is playing the notes correctly, but doesn't have very good tone or tonguing. So I would put her at a three, even though the playing was, the reading was fluent. I don't like the tonguing and she's not playing legato. So that would not be a four for me, even though she's reading correctly and, and playing all the fingerings correctly, that would be a three or a two. For assessing form, um, I put form cards in units, theory, form. And that right now is the only thing that is in that particular unit. It's on Music Play Online. And you can make up little packages of form cards. And then when you've played the Viennese musical clock, it's I think number two in Listen Kit 3. After you've played it, the cup game shows the form, but then you could play the music and see if the kids can successfully identify the various sections of it. Every time we played on cups, it was an A section. Every time we made different movements, it was a B or it was a C section. Uh, here's the, the cup game. And this is what the form cards look like. You have to put multiple A's and B's and C's and D's into a package for the kids. And I colored them on different colored cards. So I colored my A's on yellow, my B's on pink, my C's on orange, my D's on blue, so that kids could easily sort out which, which form card they wanted. Um, here's a quick idea for assessing tempo. This is Artie's new resource, and her Chester is so much fun. faster. So she teaches, and these are all included in the publication, Singing Fun and Games, she teaches the tempo terms with these little poems. She'll say it at tempo, kids echo, adagio, adagio, adagio means slow, kids repeat. So then they learn those tempos. If I want to assess them, Give them a piece of scrap paper from the recycling bin, put their name at the top, write down question one, two, three, four, and then you ask them questions. Write down the tempo word that means slow. 
adagio, adagio, adagio means slow. That will be stuck in their head if you've done that poem with them enough times. And they will learn those tempo terms. So again, one, two, three, four. One is few answers are correct. That would be one answer. Two, two answers are correct. Three, three answers. Four, all of them are correct. Um, another thing. Yes. Sorry to interrupt. I just wanted to let you know we are at 525. All right. So and just I a will heads up for timing. <laughs> okay. I'm going as fast as I can. And, Perfect. Okay. Here's another great tempo song. This is the song Tap It Here. It's music play two. It replaces the song Do Your Ears Hang Low that we found out was minstrel tradition and pulled it. So again, multiple tempos. For dynamics, I love Artie's lesson on John Jacob Jingleheimer Schmidt. I hope she puts it in her new book. But again, I would do the dynamics assessment formally with a piece of scrap paper. You can always photocopy, but you know, lots of us are limited as to how many copies we can do. So then I would simply assess whether they can do it or not. I think I actually got through almost everything I wanted to. I, I, this is just a ton of things to know where to find. So I mentioned, what did I mention that I was supposed to show you on the website? Help me, Danae. Yes, so we were going to look at some of the assessment things and where to find them. Okay. I did have so we'll a go. question about how to find them, so we're in the perfect spot. <laughs> okay, so lesson planning is where you go. Lesson plans. Click on the left side and then click on planning resources. And I've been doing everything from grade two today. So here is the tracking chart. Here is, here is the tracking chart as a Word doc, so you can edit it. And here's that lovely music self-assessment tool that you can uh, download and copy for your kids. I, I actually really like getting the kids to do that. So those are lots of assessments there. Um, instruments. I'm wrong. I wanted to go to units and I wanted to go to ORF and go into the ORF directory. And those ORF assessments that I was talking about are here. Here's a self-assessment for barred instruments. And I believe we are putting more up. That's the one that I screenshotted. But there are a few more that I have that we can add to this. Um, when we go into recorder, so now I will go into instruments. And if I go into recorder and I go into the introduction to kit one, if I scroll down, I have a lot of materials here that I can use. And I believe we have, if we don't have the assessment here, it will probably be in the teacher notes. And I'm not seeing the assessment there, but pretty sure it's in the teaching notes. Here's the sequence. positive I put it in here. Here's composition example. Here's assessment for the student composition. Here's a rubric for assessing student playing. So yes, it is in the teaching notes there in the recorder. Are there any other specific areas that I mentioned that I forgot to show? Can you put um, in the chat? Yeah, I haven't seen any questions about that, but I do have two more questions sure. uh, while we're waiting. Uh, First one is, is there a way to filter the reading songs out? Yes. So go to the song list. You know, actually, it's really, really easy to do it by grade level. So if I want the grade two reading songs, I just click on grade two, and anything that has a sulfa pattern or a rhythm pattern is going to be a reading song. Um, so you can do it that way, but, and, and that's a very, a, I like that way because I can see at a glance. Some of these I will know, some of these I won't know. Mouse Mousy, I know that song. Let's do it. It's a fun little game. Um, so that's probably the easiest way to filter. Another way to filter, I go add a filter. And then I can filter by rhythm or by tone set. So if I filter by rhythm, I'm going to filter for songs that have a half note in grade two. And this pulls up my reading songs with half notes. Um, Jolly Old St. Nicholas will not have reading stuff because the rest of the song is too complex. But where it has simple solfa, simple rhythms, it will have all those reading things. So if I go to Hill Hill, which is a fun little chase game, you can see the kids having fun doing it. 
It'll have the Beat and Rhythm Interactives, the Beat and Rhythm Worksheets, Sulfa Challenge, Sulfa Worksheets. Okay, more questions. Awesome. My last question is, is your 2468 Everybody Sit Up Straight somewhere on the website? <laughs> of course not. I don't think I've ever written that down, um, but I'll say it again for you. 2468 Everybody Sit Up Straight. Put your feet on the floor. Sit ahead a little more. For any time that kids are sitting in chairs, we don't want them leaning back because they won't be able to get nice big breaths. Um, another really good posture corrector. I wish I had a chair here. There is no chair, but there is an exercise ball. Um, there is a little stool here. I'm in the hotel fitness room, so this makes life really interesting. We have to have creative solutions. Um, this is a Jen Forsland um, idea. She just said, copy me. And she'd do that. And then she'd do this. And then she'd do this. And then she'd do this. And she'd sit the way she wanted her students to sit. And that was incredibly effective for getting kids to sit up nice and tall. And they, they'd know as soon as she said, copy me, that they were going to get encouraged to have good posture. So yes, somewhere in teaching tips today, we can make a little note that we need to put something about our posture exercises. I don't for know. For sure, I made a note of it on our page today. <laughs> <laughs> yes, we all, we, we collect notes because there's so many things that you do in teaching, you don't even think about. They're just ingrained as part of your little toolkit. And um, yeah, the posture ones, we definitely should write down and put someplace. Okay, any other thoughts? Question. That is all I have for questions, unless I don't see any more in the chat either. Okay, well, thank you for um, waiting for me till I came down to this lovely exercise room in my hotel. And I have to say, the Wi Fi is 10 times better than it was in my room. Little smelly, but the Wi Fi is good. I hope everybody has a great teaching week. And I hope these assessments makes your reporting to parents a little bit easier. Thanks so much, everybody. All right. Awesome. Thank you so much, Denise. Have a great night, everyone. Good night. All right, bye.